experience when your kindergarten age child came and corrected you, either how you speak how to speak or how to say a word. At least in my case, that's what happened. My four-year-old kindergarten uh, child used to come to me and always corrected my heavily Indian-accented English. He tried to teach me how to speak, you know, in an American way. So we adults, we think that we can train the next generation. But you know what happens? this next generation actually trains the older generation. That is, I think, a more daunting task than training the newer one. Uh, there was this uh, English poet, William Wordsworth. You must have heard some of you. He said that child is a father, child is father of the man. How true. You want to make a social change or a cultural change you have to go to kindergarten and tell them, and they will propagate it upwards to the elders. So the next person I'm trying to introduce uh, here, uh, the next speaker, he has taken this to an absolutely different level. He has not only propagated it upwards, but to other children also, who can carry it further in their own areas. Here, you know, his, uh, he started a company called Green Kids Now Incorporated when he was eight years old. And by the time he was 12 years old, he, has, he had written two books. He also got, uh, in 2012, I think that's when he was 12 years old. Uh, I'm told, I don't believe that, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, he got the award from Environmental Protection Agency for Environmental Youth Award, and also the recognition from the President of the United States. And uh, he is uh, Pawan Raj Gowda. He's 80 years old. I I'm, I'm telling you, don't go by his looks. His looks 18. His mother told me he's 18. I don't believe it, because what he achieved is something that you achieve only after spending 80 years of your life. So he is here, Pawan, and I will give it to him to tell you how, what he did. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm very honored to share my story with you all. It's very energizing to see so many of you with the commitment and passion to get involved in our community and become leaders. I was always very conscious of my surroundings. Even as early as four years old in preschool, it used to bother me how everyone emphasized to clean up my play area, yet I would see trash all around in our parks, roads, and public places. Like all of you, I enjoyed play on, playing outside, but I couldn't help notice all the trash around us. These observations stuck with me. When I was in second grade, I wrote a story called The Two Lakes, which details how the whole community should come together to care for the environment. I received a lot of positive feedback for the story, and I really felt energized to do more and actually solve these problems. I was talking with my parents and felt it would be good if I had my own website so I could share my thoughts with everyone. So then, about two months later, my parents gifted me greenkidsnow.org as a birthday present. Thrilled to have my own website, I then began speaking with local park rangers. So Ranger Sandy in Fremont was very supportive and gave me a lot of information about Lake Elizabeth, our birds migrating, and we also discussed how feeding the animals were doing more harm than good. I started writing articles and tips to save our environment and published them on my website. I spoke to my class, my families and friends, and organized park and creek cleanup events. I also started talking to libraries and other local community events 
to get volunteers to come join me for these one-day service projects. So now, many people ask me why I got started and what inspired me. Actually, I was self-inspired and was working on what was around me. So then, a few months later, the City of Fremont Environmental Division saw that I was taking action and asked me to exhibit in their Earth Day Fair. I made a pledge and asked every person, kid or adult, that came by to pledge to care for our environment. However, it did not take me long to realize that all the work I was doing for several months now was still not bringing permanent change, even in one city. The enormity of the issues daunted on me, and I started investigating deeper. I had a special tour of the Fremont Recycling and Transfer Station, and even interviewed the manager to learn more about waste management. Yeah. So I felt a dire need to go out and solve these problems. So my parents helped me register Green Kids Now as a nonprofit organization and we later received the 501c3 status. So I started researching more into the root causes of these solutions, and every time it would lead me to irresponsible businesses as one cause. I also noticed that the local community at large was relatively unaware of the seriousness of this problem. One issue that I researched was water pollution and the side effects of fracking. So later, I used my research and published my second book, Gecko Boy, The Battle of Fracking. This is a science fiction book based on biomimicry and also details the side effects of fracking. So both my books are available on Amazon, and all the proceeds go back to environmental projects for green kids. So please buy my books today and help support our initiatives. So there are two, tax that I, two tracks that I was working on. One is to raise awareness about the issues, and the other is to create programs and services to take action. I, under, I realized that different people understand information in different ways, and that to raise awareness, we need to adopt multiple methods. So these are the ways I use to spread the word, such as public speaking, being a global reporter for a radio show, writing stories, articles, and blogs, creating art displays, participating in events and hosting information tables, and I also organized a Green Kids conference. I organized the first conference when I was 10 years old and it had been sponsored by Microsoft for five years. Simultaneously, I also did programs for local communities and schools. So my Green Star School program is an accreditation program for schools to demonstrate the level of leadership in environmental stewardship. So I also started a plastic caps recycling project, and that is me presenting in the Fremont uh, City Council meeting. So I was talking about the issue, my solution, and the ways that the city could get involved. Now this project has reached people across the country. Even now, I get emails from people in the Midwest and East Coast asking me to continue the program. There is still a great need to find a better solution to this plastic caps problem, and we definitely need more people in power to step in. I also worked with local organizations and schools and organized many wetlands reconstruction projects. So this is a wetland reconstruction project I did in Clifford School in Redwood City. So in 2014, I also became an official climate leader for Al Gore's climate reality project. I became very active as a climate leader, and soon I became a climate mentor. I was assigned a group of adults and mentored them and helped them to become effective climate leaders. I was only 15 at the time. So as I get older, my passion for caring for the environment remains as strong as ever, but my curiosity surrounding the challenges facing our environmental progress has evolved and now I'm focused on sustainable innovation. I believe that it's possible to achieve both environmental growth and economic progress if we're open to rethink everything around us. 
In closing, I would like to leave you with my three new R's for a path moving forward, which is to rethink, redesign, and restore with environmental sustainability in the core of everything we do. So thank you, and let's save our planet. Thank you. <laughs>